we have already discussed about that there are total 6 chapter in your drcs syllabus so and there are five modules in which six chapters are there but in module number 1 there are two chapters so the first chapter is the building and loading layout and the second chapter is g plus 3 rc building so in building and loading layout you have to design or you have to find out forces on a residential building or commercial building and water tank in which the wind load capacity or wind load acting and the forces acting due to wind load has to be find out and in the second chapter which is the g plus 3 rc building so this is the your module number 1 your module number 2 is design of retaining wall your module number 3 is design of water tank your module number 4 is the design of flat slab and the last module is the earthquake resistant design of building so students let us start our module number 1 in which the chapter number 1 the name of chapter number 1 is building and loading layout so in building and loading layout there are lots of theories but main two theories is important so first theory is type of load and second theory is what is the load combinations okay so students now our first theory is enlist and explain the types of load which may have to be considered while we have to design any structure of rcc okay so you all know that there are total three types of load so first load is vertical load so in vertical load there are three loads has to be considered while we have to design any rcc building because in vertical load there are three loads the first load is live load second one is dead load and third one is impact load now the brief discussion about the dead load and live load and impact load is discussed in the later in this chapter and in this lecture okay so this is the first load which is the vertical load second load is horizontal load so in horizontal load there are main two types of load which may have to be considered while designing any rcc building so our first load is wind load and second one is earthquake load and last load is longitudinal load so in longitudinal load there is one load it is called as moving load which is course is to be refer while designing any rcc building okay so students first of all dead load so what is the meaning of dead load dead load means the load which are remain steady okay it means the self weight of all the structural components which are remain steady and not varying with time to time it is called as the dead load second one is live load so you all know that what is the meaning of live load live load in which the first word is live it means the load which are not remain steady but it change with time to time in the position so it is called as live load third load is impact load so you all know that impact it means whenever any component is dropped from your hand it will impact on downward side if you throw any component say for example if you throw a tennis ball or a any balls so it will landing on the ground so that load is called as impact load because that ball is moving to downwards direction due to some gravitational force 
so that ball is acting on the ground and that force is considered as impact load so this is the main three type of load which is considered in vertical load okay second force is horizontal force so in horizontal force we have to consider live load and earthquake load so which is load is to be referred while we have to design for earthquake load so your earthquake load is your chapter number 6 in which you have to refer to is code first one is is 1893 2002 as per gtu point of view but in real practical design you have to refer is 1893 2016 because this code is modified in 2016 and published and all the structural building nowadays is designed as per 1893 2016 and second is code is is 13920 it means this code is useful for ductile detailing so what is the meaning of ductile detailing is discussed in the earthquake resistant design of building which is the chapter number 6 okay and our second horizontal force is wind load so this wind load calculation is discussed in your chapter number 1 it means in this chapter so we have to refer is 875 part 3 okay so the first question is how many parts of is 1 sorry is 875 so it there are five parts of is 875 and all the parts is discussed in the next to next slide later in this lecture okay so now we are discussing about the type of loads with the help of figure so students you can see that this is the type of loads figure in which you can see that this is two persons okay so these two members are not stayed remain steady okay so these two members is walking or sleeping in the rooms so their loads is considered to be as a live load because the load which are not remain steady and change with the time to time is called as live load okay now what is that load so you can see that this is slab rcc slab okay so this is column so rcc slab column beam chhajja all these components is always remain steady they are never change with time to time so that load is called as dead load third load is snow load because this is roof okay so generally snow load is acting on the hilly region area so you can see that this is your roof in which this is the snow so you can see that this is the sign snow load is generally considered as downward direction okay and you can see that this is wind load okay this is inertia force and you can also see that in this figure this is wind load and you all know that with the increasing in the height the capacity of the wind load is increase okay so these are the main load first one is dead load second one is light load third one is wind load fourth one is earthquake load and last one is snow load so students in the next to next slide we are discussing in the briefly about all these five major loads okay now in the next slide we are discussing about which is code has to be refer as to find out which load okay so students generally total seven types of loads which are to have may be consider why we have to design any structure so first load is dead load so dead load has to be find out as per is 875 part 
one. Second load is live load, and live load is also called as imposed load. So live load is to be find out as per IS 875 Part Two. Third one is wind load. So wind load has to be calculated as per IS 875 Part Three. Fourth one is snow load. So snow load has to be calculated as per IS 875 Part Four. Fifth one is earthquake load. So earthquake load has to be calculated as per IS 1893 2002. Okay, but this IS code is find out nowadays with the help of IS 1893 2016. Sixth load is shrinkage, creep, and temperature effect. So, whenever your building have long dimension, so there will be some temperature effect of expansion and contraction like this. Okay, and last category of load is other forces and effect. So, this other forces and effect is given in IS 875 Part Five. So the first question is how much part, how many parts of IS 875 part? So there are major five parts of IS 875. Okay. So now let us discuss about our first load, which is the dead load. So you all know that dead load in a building includes the weight of all the permanent constructions, like. so you can see that this is the figure of dead load in which first of all in any frame building the load transfer from slab to beam beam to column and column to footing foundation so in dead load calculation which components load has to be considered in dead load so floor load roof load wall load partition walls beams columns balcony lintel chhajas and footings all these components load has to be considered in dead load calculations okay and in this figure it is clearly mentioned that you can see this this is number 1 it means slab this is number 2 means beam it means slab load is going to beam beam load is transferred to column so this is column given as number 3 and last one is footing it is given as number 4 so this is the dead load now the second load is live load so you all know that this is the person so this person is moving like this continuously so their load is considered as live load or it is also called as imposed load so the load which are not remain steady but keep on changing its position from time to time is called as live load or imposed load now which load is to be consider in the calculation of live load so there are four loads so first one is weight of moving persons second one is cars third one is moving furnitures and last one is moving partitions now you can see that this is table so whenever your exam there is no any clarification about the live load value then you have to prepare about if your building is residential building or hospital building you have to assume it as 2 kN per meter square for office it is 2.5 for bank or reading room it is 3 for assembly hall it is 4 kN per meter square for factory and store room it is 5 to 10 and the last one is stair and balcony so it is 3 to 5 kN per meter square so this is the calculation of live load third load is wind load so students wind load is to be considered while we have to designing tall structure building there is no any clarification there is no requirement if your building is g plus 1 or g plus 2 okay 
if your height of building is about 10 meter as per IS codal provision then you have to design your building with the help of wind load ok so wind load is depend upon the velocity of wind and size and shape of the building so design wind velocity which is denoted by Vz is find out from the equation Vz or it is also called as Vd is equal to Vb into K1 into K2 into K3. This equation is given in IS 875 part 3 on page number 8. After finding out the design wind velocity, the next step is to find out design wind pressure. So, the equation of design wind pressure is 0.6 into Vz square. This equation is given on page number 12. Okay. So, this is the wind load. Next load is snow load. So, students, you all know that generally actual load due to snow will depend upon the shape of roof and its capacity to retain the snow and snow load is generally likely to be considered while the snow is likely to be fall ok and the snow load is expressed in the unit Newton per meter square or kilo Newton per meter square and the direction of wind load is considered as vertically downward ok so students the minimum snowfall on the roof has to be expressed with the equation S is equal to mu into S0. Now, what is the value S? The S is design snow load on plan area of roof. Second one is mu. Mu means shape coefficient and S0 is snow, ground snow load. But one major important thing is if your slope of ground or slope of roof is greater than 60 degree then the snow load is not to be considered okay and last load is earthquake load so you can see that this is earthquake load in which your building is shaking like this okay so Earthquake shock cause movement of foundation of structure. So you can see that this is your foundation of structure. Okay, now earthquake causes the shaking of ground in all the three directions two horizontal direction and one vertical direction. And as we are discussing above and already discussed in the lecture that earthquake load is to be calculated as per IS 1893-2002 Okay, so students, this is the end of